Scoliosis and multiple sclerosis. Can one lead to the other? Scoliosis is a structural spinal condition and it typically involves the development of an unnatural sideways curvature that also rotates into the concavity of the scoliosis. Unfortunately, scoliosis is a progressive condition, meaning it is in its very nature to worsen over time. So where scoliosis is initially diagnosed doesn't necessarily mean it's where it's gonna remain as the condition worsens, typically during growth in adolescent stages and slowly in the adult stage as a result of a compression over time. Now, when we look at multiple sclerosis, this is a disease of the central nerve system, and the brain and the spinal cord are what make up the central nerve system, and the central nerve system is a vast communication network that facilitates brain-body communication, and your central nerve system is what controls all the functions of your body, muscle activity, immune function, and, and, and whatnot. Multiple sclerosis involves the body's immune system is actually attacking something called the myelin sheath, which is something that actually covers every the, all the nerves of the body to help the nerves fire faster. And this, this, uh, this immune system attacking it disrupts the way the brain and the body communicate with each other. So can scoliosis cause multiple sclerosis? Now we know scoliosis can affect spinal nerves within the spinal cord through compression, but we don't believe it can cause the development of an autoimmune disorder that actually directly targets the central nerve system. Scoliosis doesn't introduce a lot of uneven forces to the spine and the surrounding muscles and nerves and through nerve compression and can cause symptoms throughout the entire body, causing pain and discomfort, abnormal body awareness, abnormal gait, some things that could be commonly associated associated with multiple sclerosis, but it's, this is not as a result of a, an immune system attack on the central nerve system. Now, can multiple sclerosis cause scoliosis? This is actually more likely that multiple sclerosis, as it's causing a disruption in brain-body communication, that this can cause a communication between the muscles and tissues and joints within the body and can cause asymmetry. And this asymmetry can lead to something that we call scoliosis as a result of a neuromuscular effect, meaning a neurological effect. And as these connective tissues of the muscles that support the spine become stretched and loose because they're not getting the normal brain-body connection, this development of a neuromuscular scoliosis can start to occur. And it typically, the scoliosis will worsen as the neuromuscular condition worsens with it. In scoliosis, because it's a structural issue majority of the time, what happens is something could cause the scoliosis very, very early in life and the body resolves it. And then that curve, it could be some kind of uh, neurological uh, condition or problem, but the body resolves it. And now it's through either growth or compression of gravity that causes the scoliosis to worsen, not what initially caused it. So the, the way these curves uh, progress are, are very, very, very different. So what are some similarities? Well, both conditions obviously evolve, can involve the brain and spinal cord. And we also know that both conditions have, can have unknown causes, meaning idiopathic reasons, and we consider them to be multifactorial, meaning there's many different variables and factors associated with causing either neuro, uh, neuromuscular scoliosis, scoliosis, or multiple sclerosis. Both conditions can have a wide variety of symptoms, meaning it could be structural, it could be neurological, it can be pain. Some patients can be, have very, very mild symptoms of any at all. And both conditions are progressive and they're both considered to be uncurable, meaning that we can't cure the scoliosis or the multiple sclerosis because we don't know what's causing them. Now, differences are some of the things that I already mentioned, but typically in idiopathic scoliosis, like I mentioned, is a structural concern that only leads to the progression. Whatever initiates the scoliosis typically will cause the curve, the person will go through growth, and during growth, the growth itself is the risk of progression. It's not what initially caused it that gets worse that causes their scoliosis to worsen. But uh, since scoliosis evolves the spine, and so does multiple sclerosis, can involve the central nerve system, we know scoliosis can compress the spinal cord and nerves leading to uh, central nerve system problems, or, but it's not directly a condition of the central nerve system being attacked by the immune system. Multiple sclerosis, like I said, is a condition of the central nerve system where scoliosis is more structural. Now, even though we know spinal structures or spinal conditions 
can definitely have very similar effects, causing them maybe different, similar pain, similar types of issues as curves or multiple sclerosis progress. We know they're very, very different type of problems. It's more likely multiple sclerosis to lead to a scoliosis development as a result of a neuromuscular condition. It's not, we don't believe it's likely for a scoliosis to lead to a multiple sclerosis condition where the body's immune system is attacking the nerve system, leading to a breakdown of, of communication. Now, is it possible for somebody to have idiopathic scoliosis and develop multiple sclerosis? 100%. And they may have a combination of idiopathic scoliosis and a neuromuscular scoliosis. There's no rule that you only can have one. So many cases that we have patients who walk in our office, they can have a combination of both things, a neuromuscular scoliosis and also have idiopathic scoliosis. But by and large, neuromuscular scoliosis tends to be a result of an underlining larger neuromuscular condition and typically, most of the time, the scoliosis is treated like a scoliosis and the neuromuscular condition is treated like a neuromuscular condition. So if you have multiple sclerosis and scoliosis, you know you treat the multiple sclerosis and then you also treat the scoliosis because eventually, no matter what the cause of scoliosis, even if it's a neuromuscular scoliosis, it starts to affect the body on a structural level. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.